The MacBook Air is amazing and clearly I love it an awful lot, but I also love buying accessories and something that I really love are budget accessories. So today, let's combine those two things and find the best budget accessories that I could find for my M1 MacBook Air. So what are they? We got a bit today. Let's find out. What's up everyone, I'm the Everyday Dad, and if I can figure it out, you can figure it out. So I went out and I found the best budget accessories that I could find for the M1 MacBook Air, and they all fit inside of this lovely backpack. And yes, it is a full system that you could use to take your M1 and plug it into whatever existing computer setup you have. This will give you all the functionality and everything in this kit costs under $25, except for one exception that I'll mention when we get to it, everything else is $25 or below and most is actually $15 or below, but we'll cross those bridges when we come to it. So the first thing we're gonna show today is the backpack that I'm talking about. And this is a Winnig, just a regular old computer backpack. This is a 15 inch laptop backpack, but I like having a size bigger. I know the MacBook Air is a 13 inch Ultrabook, but I like having just a little bit bigger of a backpack because then you can fit more stuff inside of it, especially if you need accessories or books or other files that you need for work. And the construction on this thing is pretty good for what you get. You get these very big, comfortable straps. You can see they do have some padding here. So carrying it around, even though I haven't been going to work and dragging all of my stuff around, I did walk around the house for a couple of hours with this on earlier, and my shoulders, generally where I have pain is like right in my shoulders. This felt great with all of the stuff in here. You can see you've got all sorts of access points here in the back, like right back here. You get a nice little pocket. Now the stitches, they're okay. One of my big things is looking at stitches and because of how dark this bag is, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this, but this is all single stitched. This is a budget bag, it's not very expensive. Um, so you're not gonna get that kind of quality here. You do get a nice little stretchy pouch here for like snacks. I don't know, do you, are you a gel person? When I'm doing races and stuff, I have gels. You could easily fit a gel in this pack. A little sunglass hoop right here and I do wear sunglasses an awful lot, and you just get a lot of like water bottle ports and other tie down spots. This will expand a little bit with the clips right here. And yeah, this is good. You could even use this as like a photography bag and put a tripod right here and then strap it down right there. So this bag, it feels really good. Can you hear that? Made out of some kind of tough nylon fabric. Now I don't know that I would consider this to be waterproof, but I bet it would be pretty water resistant. Another cool feature is here on the top. You've got like a lock on it, so you can set this to be locked, you can set your own combination, lock it to things, and you've also got, and we'll see in here, but you've also got a charging, can I show you? Can you see that right over here? We've got a charging, a USB charger, and a headphone jack. A lot of times when we check out these like tech bags, they'll do one or the other, but this time we've got both, which is really cool. You do get an awful lot of pockets, and on the top pocket out here is where I'm gonna put the things that I think we're gonna need more often, and we just dropped one already. So first off, when we talk about a MacBook, especially one of the new M1 MacBooks, what's the biggest problem? Okay, the answer is port selection. And so you're gonna need some kind of a dongle to get over that. And so this is a Mokin, but there are hundreds of kinds of these dongles on the internet right now. So you don't necessarily have to buy this specific one. The one that I'm always talking about here is the Falwetti, but this is basically exactly the same. So we've got two USB-A, SD card, micro SD card, HDMI, basically, the bare minimum that you need to really function with a laptop anymore, especially if you're gonna plug it in to an external display. You can import footage, you, you can hook up all sorts of accessories with this. And then another thing that I do always carry with me is a USB-C to USB-A. So if maybe you just wanna plug in like, I don't know, a wired mouse, or you have some other accessory that's USB-A, because a lot of accessories are still USB-A, despite the advancements in port technology, I was, it's so easy to carry one of these around and these cost almost nothing. Dongle and port enhancers, we'll call it a port enhancer. Those are the things that you're gonna need like right off the bat um, if you're gonna be using a MacBook. Now I do think that you'd probably be using the mouse most and the only carryover, this is the only carryover from a previous video because I like this mouse so much and I could not find a better option out there. This is the Logitech Pebble M350 mouse. Now this one you can find on sale, this was $26. This is not the one that I'm talking about that's a little more expensive. So okay, two things in the kit are over $25. This is the one that's, I bet you could find this though on sale for less than that at some point. But this is a Bluetooth and or wireless mouse. I love this thing, it's so small, but it just, sometimes the problems that I'll run into with small travel mice is they are uncomfortable to hold because of how small they are. 
But this is, it feels great to use. And can you hear the click? You probably can't hear that. It's super satisfying to click. I like that you still have the scroll wheel. It's very accurate and it connects very easily. And this weighs nothing. I, I will always have a mouse on hand for whatever tablet or whatever computer I'm using because this thing is so small. This is one of my favorite accessories that we've ever talked about, which is why you see it in these accessory videos so often. Because it doesn't cost very much, it transports great, and it's so usable. I love it. I love it. Okay, let's get to the next inner pouch. And now we've got a few other big accessories that we're gonna need for the MacBook Air. So just like a mouse, I prefer working off of a mouse and keyboard as often as I can, and without needing that much heft that much weight or losing out on that much capability. Normally here in the office, I use the Magic Keyboard, but this is the Artec Bluetooth Keyboard. I've used a lot of these in the past for like the iPad when we do iPad videos, but this is just a tiny little Bluetooth keyboard. Um, can you hear these keys? They're not the best, but they work really well in conjunction with a mouse. You can see that this is an Apple setup version where it's got the function control option command. So this will work pretty standard on an Apple computer or even an iPad if you wanted it to. You can see here, you can set this up for iOS, Android, or Windows. You've got a lot of function keys. This is just really great. It pairs very easily. You can see here, you've got the on off switch, hold down to connect it to Bluetooth, and it is powered by two AAA batteries that it actually comes with it, which is nice. One of the things that I hate when we're talking about buying batteries for gear, especially if gear's gonna need a legacy battery, I hate when the batteries don't come with it because I don't keep very many batteries around in my house anymore. Use 2021, folks. We don't need batteries around here, but yeah, mouse keyboard combination, so good. Look at that. Super small, and you can do all of the work you need right here. There's some flex in the keyboard itself, but again, it's budget. There's only so much build quality you're gonna get out of a budget accessory. The next thing we're gonna talk about is the Oakzu, the Oakzu the OKZU, a battery. We've got a 10,000 milliamp hour external battery. You probably got sick of me talking about Anker and Rath Power, so we went with this one today. 10,000 milliamp hour battery, comes with USB-A, USB-C, USB-A. You've got the four little dots here to show you charge status. I prefer a digital readout when I can because there is a very big difference between 50% and 25% or like 50% and the last dot, there's a pretty big difference there. And so I like seeing it spelled out a bit, but external batteries, they're so cheap. You can find them in any shape or form anymore. I like this one just because I've, I'm a sucker for like matte gray finishes. This is a very nice matte gray. It also charges via micro USB, which is a weird cable that you probably don't see very often anymore, but you can get external battery. You don't have to buy this specific one. Just have an external battery, even though the MacBook Air has fantastic battery life this will get you even more battery life. So this next thing is a one terabyte hard drive, and this is the thing that costs substantially more than the rest of the kit. This costs 50 bucks, and this is a Seagate one terabyte spinning drive. This is not an external solid state drive, this is a regular spinning drive. And the reason I did this is because you can find cheaper solid state drives and cheaper drives out there, however, I have concerns when buying like the cheapest drives. You never know who could put in potential malware if you're buying a non-reputable brands kind of drive. So I did err on the side of buying name brand. The problem you're gonna run into here, one spinning drive, so you're not gonna get necessarily as fast a transfer speeds or storage speeds or write speeds as you would on a solid state drive. But this also has a USB connector, which when's the last time you saw one of these? And it is one of these weird USB. So if you lose this cable that comes with it, you probably don't have another one just hanging out at your house and we'll need to buy another one. So it's USB-A to USB donk. But one of the things, so I do really recommend an external drive, whatever kind of storage you get on the laptop. Well, the way that I used to work off of my MacBooks when I had like the MacBook Pro 2015, like the base model, 128 gigabytes, barely held any files on it at all. I would keep all of my work files on the internal drive. And then as soon as I was done working, I would transfer everything off onto the external drive because this gives you one terabyte as opposed to 256 gigabytes on the cheapest model. You always need more storage. And this at 50 bucks, it was the cheapest that I would be willing to go. And a terabyte is about what I would consider to be the standard amount of storage that you would need if you're gonna be a content creator or if you're gonna do more than just like watch the internet or if you're not paying for some premium cloud service. One terabyte, pretty good. Okay, so we've talked about those. Let's actually get into the main compartment of this bag and get to the big stuff. And when I talk about big stuff, 
here we go. The biggest of big stuff, a stand. Now, no, you don't have to bring this with you everywhere. This is probably more for just like a home office setup, but I really like stands anymore. And ever since transitioning over into using one, uh, I don't know that I could go without using a stand, period. Unless I was gonna, like the way I have my current computer set up is I have my MacBook Pro 13 tucked behind my gigantic monitor. But if I was only gonna work off of the laptop, there's no way that I could do that anymore without a stand because a stand gets the laptop up, pushes it back. You get the screen more like naturally in line with your face. You're not hunched over. You're not scrunched over. I hate, I hate, let me say this again. I hate being scrunched over a laptop working. It is not very good ergonomics. I'm getting to be older. I'm going to be 40 here in just a couple of years. I'm now more concerned about like workplace soft tissue injuries. So I believe me, Proper posture sounds like something that, oh, that's just, just a weird thing to take care of. That's an old person thing to worry about. It's important. Getting a big stand lets you take care of that a lot. And this is not necessarily a MacBook stand. This could work with lots of laptops. You can see there's a big like cooling system here so that the fans can still work. You don't need to worry about that with the MacBook Air because the MacBook Air doesn't have a fan. It's not gonna draw anything out of here, but it is, this is big, heavy. It can hold a lot of stuff, but this would easily let you set into desk mode. And then you have your keyboard and then your mouse. And then you've got all of this ready to go. Just getting, oh, just so good. I love, I love stands like these. These are the absolute best. These are the best. Okay, we've got a couple more things to talk about. And one of them is my favorite thing. I love talking about these so much. We haven't talked about it in a while, but I'm excited. You'll see it in just a second. So I always keep... I'm a big nervous Nelly when it comes to my gear getting scratched, dented, all that stuff. So if I'm traveling or if I'm leaving the office or if I'm leaving my house, I like having it in some kind of a sleeve. You can find all sorts of sleeves out there. Amazon Basics has a line. This one, you can find all sorts of stuff. And they all just work really well. I know some people don't like the zipper top here because they feel like it could scratch the top of their laptop. I've never really had a problem with that. I like all these sleeves. They have like pouches right here where you can fit additional things if you only have this. The zippers are okay, they're not great. This one you can see kind of has like a weather sealed taper to it. So it's not waterproof, but at least the zipper's not totally left out to the elements. You just unzip it, take out your laptop. You can see the inside has like a nice soft material so it's not gonna scratch your computer which is important. I want to take care of my tech as much as I can because it takes care of me. <laughs> but no, I love sleeves like this. It makes it so easy and really big peace of mind, especially if you're gonna have a bunch of accessories. Maybe you just put them in the main part of the backpack. If they're moving around and they're banging around, they could scratch everything in there and you don't want it to scratch your laptop. Just, it's like 10 bucks. 10 bucks for peace of mind. I'm all about that. But here's my favorite thing, and I love it every time we talk about this. I bought another one of these for this video. This is the 3M adhesive mouse pad. So you're probably like, Gary, you wanna make a video with all of this stuff, but we're not, we don't get every creature comfort from home in this setup. Well, you do, you do. This is a mouse pad, works. You get the mouse pad, the keyboard, the stand. You got everything here, team. We've got a full on setup here and there you go. That is how you get work done. Mouse pads make your mouse more accurate. I've heard they actually increase the longevity of your mouse. You don't have to worry about scratching up the surface that you're gonna use. This adhesive is really nice. It lasts a long time so you can keep just Putting it on top of your laptop. If you're concerned that you're gonna forget it somewhere, you just keep it right on here. It does look like it leaves a little bit of a film on top of there. Films are easy to fix with like a, a microfiber cloth or something like that. What you can't fix is a scratch or a ding. So I'm willing to do this. This is what the second or the third time we've talked about one of these 3M. They cost so little and they just live on top of your laptop. I love it, this is my favorite thing. I never, ever, ever get sick of that. Because then when you use it and you set it on a table, it doesn't move from the table either. One of the things that you can have a problem with, especially small mouse pads, yeah, sure, they've got that rubber grip on the bottom, but if they move, then like, that's about as frustrating as you can get with a mouse pad. This one, because if it's adhesive, it's 3M, they know all about adhesives, right? Just pop it on the top, or if you want to, because of the MacBook, the way it is, you could pop it on the bottom so you don't have to see it, and you still get that lovely Apple. Apple, that's Sega. But yeah, these are all of my favorite budget accessories that I was able to find. I bought all of these myself. Nobody provided these to me. Let me know in the comments below, what are some of your favorite budget accessories? We all, look, I love these gadgets. I love them. That's why I make so many of these 
gadget accessory videos. So let me know in the comments what are your favorite accessories and if there's any accessories that you would like to share with the rest of the team, you know, that's how we're gonna grow is we're all gonna share what our favorite accessories are together. Ding! And if you like this video and you're curious how the M1 MacBook Air is holding up after I've been using it for a month, spoilers, it is my favorite laptop of 2020, but you can find that video by clicking right here. Click, 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 click. Thanks for watching.